Illegal wildlife trade is the third biggest illegal trade in the world. Uh, the first one being drugs, the second one being arms, and third being wildlife. And often they use the same traffic routes for, for transporting wildlife as they do for drugs and arms. How many does he have? 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 How many It's a terrible thought for me that they, they were most definitely baby birds. They were very, very young. They had just been poached out of their nest, evidently. These are animals that will not survive for a long time without the proper care. And they were in, an, in a bag, stuffed in a bag, most definitely suffering. It's rough to see that. We're in Nicaragua right now in the, the only official rescue center in Nicaragua. These are animals that have been taken out of the illegal wildlife trade that happens in Nicaragua. We are a group, um, a profit group, and we create because we need to protect the animals here. And they are sent here as part of the process to be rehabilitated and reintroduced in the wild. So we've been able to establish model rescue centers in each of the Central American countries. When we first started here, there was only this shed with a couple of cages in the back, and everything that you see here now, we've been able to do in a little over a year. The rescue centers actually hold um, the representation of, of the illegal wildlife trade. What we see in rescue centers is what is out there. We have been working in Nicaragua since 2004, and it is one of the few countries in Central America where you still can see the illegal wildlife trade is evident on the streets and you see people selling birds. That said, it has improved in the past couple years, and you can see a lot less people selling, selling the birds. We started work with a grant from the State Department to work with rescue centers and to educate communities on the value of wildlife and keeping it wild. Our focus is always, of course, animal welfare and the idea that wildlife belongs in the wild. So we work very hard at being able to curb the trade as much as possible through education. The birds that we see on the side of the street, they represent a lot more wildlife. Five birds taken out of the wild, only one survives. These animals are getting prepared to be uh, taken, transported to the release site. They go through a complicated process of rehabilitation, training and tests to make sure that it can be released back into the wild. To have to have enough of strength of muscles to be able to fly in the wild, be able to identify the food that they can get in the wild, and that has to be taught at a rehabilitation center. It's great. It's actually the success story behind all the efforts that not only HSI, but everybody puts forth for the animals. So it's a, it's a great success story. Todos los animales. Ah, buenísimo. All the animals are going to be released inside by this wooded area here. It has access to all that biological corridor that you see behind it. I am very passionate about the wildlife program. You can see the improvement in the efforts that have been made to reintroduce these animals. 
it's nice to see that, that there is fruition to the work that you do and there is results that you can see and feel and leave future generations. Ah, también mucha emoción porque este, este es parte de un proceso, ¿verdad? De que He's very excited to see that we've been, he's been talking to different people and different organizations since the 90s on rescue centers. And it's great to see in the last couple of years through collaboration with organizations like Humane Society and Fazunik, where the rescue center has come to fruition and they've been able to see things like today's release, where we can see the success of all the work that has been done for so many years. And when you work very close with the animals, and you see, you can release, and they are really healthy, and they young in the, in the natural thing, I feel so happy. <laughs>